You guys want to see a 911 call that Mox kidnapped mom freezing to death? I do. Don't you guys? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, already. Then how are you holding the phone? Why are you like questioning and judging someone who's potentially dying? Uh, well, if it's masking tape, how are you talking to me right now? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Are you sure you're dying? This 911 Oh, is that a Nokia? Dude, I had this exact phone. Okay, maybe not the exact one, but I had a Nokia, dude. These things are rocks. Operator isn't taking the call. These stupid phones that like, look at, 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 look at this. I, you can't really tell. I have a crack on the corner of my phone. I dropped it like accidentally. You could throw this thing through a wall. All are seriously. They think it might be a prank, but the woman on the other end can barely breathe and she's in grave danger. What? Even though the caller is running out of air, she's able to get crucial information. Do you want to talk to me or deep breathe? Nine one one operator not putting two and two together that murders happen and crimes like that happen, where people call and can't talk. I Dude, what? Listen to the operator. <clears throat> Desperate for them to believe her. Oh. Odin, son. You had one job. That's true. They did have one job and they fucked up. When the police show up at the address she gave, there's no one inside, but they find a large blood stain on the carpet and an empty handgun case. Then, another call comes in, this time from a man saying his wife Terry is missing, but she's not the only one. Her two daughters also vanished oh, come on. without a trace. It hit me like nothing ever before in my career. He is a very dangerous, cold-blooded monster. Vehicle should be occupied by David Larson, his wife, and two small children. <laughs> There's some slim chance that she could still be alive, and we weren't gonna rest until we found her and her children safely. The year is 1996. Terry Jandusa is celebrating her new marriage to David Larson. They seem to have a happy life together. Over the next few years- 911 they... operators seem like they hate their job and it makes me angry like you are here <clears throat> to get people help. I think we talked about this last time. Is like, I get that you probably get a lot of prank calls. Like you're a 911 operator. I'm sure you get a lot of like butt dials or prank calls or just dumb shit. But like, Bro, if like when people's lives are on the line, you have to take every single call seriously. It's like the equivalent. This is why I say about suicide. Anytime anyone says like, I'm going to kill myself or, or implying that that's going to happen. It doesn't matter if they're not serious. It doesn't matter if it might not be real. You take it as fact. You take it as real. Same shit if you're a 911 operator, someone calls and says that they're dying. It doesn't matter if you think it's a joke. You take it real. And then at least you find out that it's fake later on instead of just saying, oh, I'm sure they're just joking and then they're dead. Like someone who commits suicide. Oh, they, uh, they're, they're not actually gonna do it. They'll get over it and then they're dead. Stupid Family people. grows and the couple welcomes two <clears throat> daughters, Amanda and Holly. But Terry soon learns that the real David isn't the kind, charming man she thought he was. Have you tried he's not dying? His wife, Good point. And he picks fights with her often. He has a violent side, and he's even hit Terry's head against the door. Whenever he has an outburst, oh. he tries to convince her that it's all her fault. 
She's the one who needs to do oh. better, and then he won't be angry. Terry's scared of what he might do. Oh, and that's she so tries terrible. As hard as she can to keep him happy, but even the smallest thing can set him off. One day, Terry's making dinner like usual, but when David sees a box of pasta on the counter, for some reason, it infuriates him, and he yells at her to put it away. It's almost like evil overcame what? him. He actually pushed me. My <clears throat> little one started crying. I'm holding this infant. He's like two months old. And I cannot look at these children and think that this is the life that they're going to oh, have. Oh, she's was... alive. She's alive. At that point where I knew we were out of here. Spoilers. Terry has been enduring Spoilers! David's abuse, blaming herself for how he treats her. But as soon as he shows that he's a danger to the kids, the video she fully us. realizes that he is the problem. Determined to protect her girls, she knows she has to end the marriage. Their divorce is finalized on January 31st, 2001, but it comes with bad news for Terry. The judge grants her and David joint custody. Good! Even though he was abusive to Terry and she did all she could to get away, she Wait, joint custody? Wait. You said... You... Okay, you started off this sentence saying... Wait. Terry, the judge grants her her girls. She knows she has to end the marriage. Their divorce is finalized on January 31st, 2001, but it comes with bad news for Terry. The you said bad news for Terry and then you said joint? That's not bad news. You can't lead me. I was thinking that she got full custody. That's why I said good. I said bad news and then you say joint custody? Judge grants her and David joint custody. That's Even not good. He was abusive to Terry and she did all she could to get away. She still has to let him see Amanda and Holly. What On the, the day fuck? That the divorce was actually fine. Wait, Terry's the woman. Dude. Terry's the woman. Terry's the woman. Oh my god, dude. I'm sorry. My brain. It's literally in the title. Pig, please. Shut up. I make mistakes. I'm human. Okay. You, you all shut up. You're stupid. You're all stupid. I probably can beat you all in a game of chess. All right. Shut up. I know. We walked out of the courtroom, and he looked at me, and he said, you're going to regret this. Yeah, I know the YouTube comments are going to destroy me now. This big brain time. Fuck you. Oh, my God. Terry has escaped after years of abuse, but the danger is far from over. She worries for her kids every time she has to drop them off for visits with their father. David's Shut thoughts up, are bitch. constantly on her mind, and it's hard for her to trust again. She finds comfort and support when she meets Nick Nikolai, and she begins to open up again. They start dating, and <clears throat> Nick shows her the love she deserves. I loved her Hold up. for how she related to the girls and who she was and the whole package. Good, good they were dad. Very happy family, and Nick embraced those children like they were good his husband. own. Everything was how it should be. Hold In up. In 2003, Terry <clears throat> and Nick get married. It should be a time full of joy and celebration, but she soon finds that her ex-husband isn't ready to let her go. Is that him? Dave. Yeah, it looked like he was zooming in on him. Like, that would be so creepy if he was, like, zooming in and then it unblurred and it's just him giving, like, an evil look Let at her them. Go. Dave had said she was going to regret <clears throat> the day that she married Nick. He had told her one time that in his eyes and in the eyes of God, they were still married. So by her dating and remarrying, she was going against God's will. Here we go with the criminals and God, man. He thought, I can't control her anymore. And I think that that's when he was really plotting to kill me. Dude, that narcissist 101. Narcissists and sociopaths, psychopaths, I don't know. They love having control, and when they lose that control, they go they go insane. On January 31st, 2004, <clears throat> the anniversary of Terry and David's divorce, Terry doesn't know that her worst fear will soon come true. She's going to pick up her kids, the now four-year-old Holly and six-year-old Amanda, after a visit at their dad's house. Her husband Nick offers to go with her, but she decides to go alone, fearing oh, no. that bringing Nick might make things worse. David has a short temper, and Terry wants oh, to do what she no. can to keep him from getting angry in front of the girls. Even though she has to see her abusive ex-husband, Terry is in good spirits, excited to see her daughter. Dude, I'm sorry. If I was her husband, I'd say, I'm going, bro. I don't give a shit. Like, I'd be bringing a gun. Nuh-uh. Like, fuck that. Why would- No. No, husband. Mr. Husband. No, you go. Again ...and tell them the big news about their family. 
was a, a very happy morning. We learned the night before that Terry was pregnant. So we were on cloud nine. Terry can't wait Aunt's to tell her pregnant. daughters that they're going to get another sibling. It's 10 a.m. when she walks up to David's house and knocks on the door. He answers, and it seems like he's in a better mood than usual, too. He tells Terry the girls are playing inside. She steps in <clears> to go get them, but she doesn't see them anywhere. It feels like something is wrong. Suddenly, before Terry has a chance to move, everything goes dark. I remember the feeling of being smashed in the head. The next thing I knew, I was face down on his living room floor. <sighs> My whole body just felt like I was paralyzed. Before she can process what's happening, David is wrapping duct tape around her, and Terry's instincts kick in. My first thought was, where are the girls? I can't die. I have to help my girls. He was trying to suffocate me, and he had his hand over me. I remembered something that I saw in a movie, and it said, turn your head away, turn your head to the side, and I kept doing that, and he was losing his grip, and he was... Wait, a movie? W? Wait, what movie is this? Can This is a perfect time to promote that. What? She learned that in a movie? I didn't even know it was a thing. Hold up. Getting frustrated <clears throat> that I wasn't going down as easy as he wanted me to. Yo, write she that down, as chat. As she can, but she's losing that blood down. quickly, and she can't escape. To her horror, David throws her inside a garbage can, and he starts packing snow and ice all around her. Then, she hears him wrapping the tape around the lid to trap her inside. What the he fuck? He picks up the garbage can, puts it in the back of his truck, and covers it with a tarp. I didn't know if he was going to dump me in a woods somewhere. I don't know why he didn't just shoot me by now, unless he just really wanted me to suffer. Terry's mind is racing. If he kills her and gets away with it, he might get sole custody of the girls. He could hurt them too once she's out of the picture. Terry quickly tries to figure out if there's anything she can do. She realizes David made a huge mistake. He didn't notice she still had her phone with her. I've got my phone in my jacket pocket. Oh, but it's not going to matter because the stupid... Oh. And I could feel the numbers, and I called 911. <clears throat> what? What kind of question is that? He's trying to kill you? What are you handcuffed to something? What he's trying to kill? What? What do you? What do you? What do you? You got handcuffs on you? Something, kid? Yeah. Why is that the first question? A masking tape? Who uses masking tape to to murder someone? And how are you holding the phone if you mask it? Okay, that doesn't make any fucking... You literally started. Your first question was, has he handcuffed you? Why would you ask that? If you, if you can't believe that she could be on a phone while having masking tape on her. This operator is stupid. <laughs> We're drinking water what do you guys think you so much? Stop. This pisses me off. It's hard to listen to. Very hard to listen to. Dude, fuck you! The 911 operator is skeptical, <clears throat> thinking it might be a prank call, but it's Wait, a life or death situation, please. and Terry gives them crucial information, like her ex husband's Thank you, name Alexander. And address. However, she or doesn't know going to take Alexinator. her. She's able to make one more phone call, this time to her husband, Nick. Not knowing how much battery she had left on her phone, I didn't want to talk to her too much in case that might be a tool that they could use to eventually find her. I told her I loved her and said goodbye. One I can't imagine the panic. The time I would talk to her alive. <clears throat> Panicked, Nick calls the police. He tells them that his wife is missing, but she's not the only one. Nick reveals that David had the children over for Dude, why have we only heard the mom and the husband talk, dude? I We only see pictures of the kids. Why do we only see pictures of the kids? Why? Scheduled visit. Terry went to pick them up afterwards, but now they've vanished, and it's a race against time to find the missing mother and her two daughters. We already know that Terry's being held against her will. God only knows where those two children are at. While police are heading to David Larson's address, Terry is trapped in a garbage can in the bed of his truck. If he drives off into the nearby woods, police might never find her. 
She pushes as hard as she can, and she's able to stick her hand outside. She waves frantically, oh. hoping there's someone passing by who might see her. But before anyone else notices, David sees what she's doing in his rearview oh, mirror. Oh no! And the truck quickly comes to a stop. He gets out and walks back to Terry, oh, warning no. her to quit fighting. After he threatens her, he <clears throat> turns around to get back in the truck. But Terry's phone suddenly starts ringing, and her heart sinks. He hears it and immediately oh, grabs it from her. Oh no! Oh, my God, my God. That was my only way of trying to save myself. But I have a baby inside of me, and I have two children to take care of. What, what am I gonna do now? They continue to drive, and Terry has one last hope. She hears police sirens coming right towards them. I heard the squad sirens, and I thought, this is over, they're gonna find me. But we kept going, and the sirens faded away into the distance. No! We passed each other up. They weren't looking for the truck that I was on, they were going to his house. At that point, I felt oh, totally helpless. Oh my god. Terry doesn't know what David plans to Where do with her. Where are the kids? I know! Daughters. And he's taken away her phone, the one connection she had to people who might be able to help. In that moment, beaten, kidnapped, and hearing the sirens fade, Terry can't help but feel like she's about to lose everything. Meanwhile, the squad cars pull up to the house. They have <clears> no <throat> idea that they just drove past the woman who called 911 trapped in a garbage can. When they enter the house, they don't see anyone inside, but as they search for anything that could help, they notice the house is filled with pictures of her and David from their wedding. They also oh, find an creepy. empty handgun case. They think David has the gun with him. During the course of our search, we found women's sweatpants. They had duct tape wrapped around the ankles. The duct tape had a red substance consistent with blood. I knew we had maybe just a few hours if he was going to keep her on those elements, probably substantially less, and we weren't going to rest until we found her and her children safely. There's more blood in the house, and investigators know Terry and her kids are in grave danger. They try to ping David and Terry's cell phones. They're able to ping David's phone in Milwaukee, about half an hour away from his home in Wind Lake, but then the signal disappears. They also find paperwork at the house that says David owns property in Milwaukee. There are three different addresses, and police look at each one. Investigators find Terry's car near one of the properties, and they think they might be getting close. Maybe David was trying to get rid of the car, but left evidence inside that could point them in the right direction. However, when they check I'm inside so stressed the car, right now, Sam. there's no sign of her or the kids. I'm, dude, I'm so panicked for the kids right now. have any clues either, and they're getting desperate. <clears throat> I didn't know what David Larson would do. Just feared that he might do something bad to all three of them. I'd there say so. A complete sense of helplessness. I mean, he already did. Back in David's truck, all Terry can think about is what her ex-husband is going to do to the girls. Suddenly, the truck comes to a stop, and she hears her daughters outside. And the next thing I knew, oh. I could feel the garbage can being oh. picked up. I could hear the girls running and laughing, and I didn't want to call out to the girls because I knew, number one, they were so little, they wouldn't be able to do anything anyway. Oh. And number two, I didn't want to traumatize them. Even They're nearing just death, there? Terry wants to do all she can to protect her daughters. And in that moment, she makes a heartbreaking decision not to say a word. Hearing them laughing and playing, she knows they haven't been hurt. But if they find out their dad attacked their mom, it would only put them more at risk. David might turn Dude, his Dude, I just want to say, the mom is an absolute G. Like, Terry is badass and hardcore. Like, holy shit. That's crazy. Yeah, strong woman. My god. She has no idea where David has taken her, but then he sets the garbage can down and starts stacking things on top of it. I was silent all this time because I wanted him to think that I was dead so he wouldn't shoot me. It was then I thought, I am in this frozen tomb. I'm gonna die. Terry's losing hope. Wondering if David is going to beat her more Six or just hours, leave her dude. to die. Then she hears a door close and everything goes quiet. He took the girls with him. She's now completely isolated, away from everyone she cares about. After waiting a few minutes to make sure he's gone, she starts yelling for help as loud as she can and she tries to make her escape. I was clawing and scraping and pushing. I got the lid off enough where I was getting some air in and I was breathing. I was praying, please get me out of here. Please keep my girl safe. Terry is finally able to breathe a little more, but with her injuries and the frigid temperatures, she's fading fast. But Terry is the guy pig? Shut up. Shut up. I made one mistake. One mistake. All right, I'm bad with names, okay? God damn it. 
And I'm never going to be able to live it down now. It's over. My career is done. I'm canceled. At the same time, police are searching everywhere <clears throat> they can for any leads. An Amber Alert is issued. And they're shocked to hear that David showed up to work Shut like up, usual bitch. in Wheeling, <laughs> Illinois, driving the same green truck from the Amber Alert that cops have been looking for. It just struck me as odd that he would just show up to work as if nothing happened. They bring David in for questioning right away. He is he just assuming that he's just like, oh, I'm just going to kidnap her, you know, uh, lock her in that trash can, and I'm just going to take the kids. You know? Job done. They'll never know. Tells police he's shocked to hear about Terry's <clears throat> disappearance, and he wants to do anything he can to help find her. Investigators play along, letting him think they believe his act. As David claims that Terry never showed up to pick up the girls, his lies pile up. He says he was home all morning, but detectives know from pinging his phone and finding Terry's car near one of his properties that he was half an hour away in Milwaukee. I was armed with lots of information that he didn't know that I knew about. And I said, David, you could not have been at your house at 1130 this morning. I had squads there at 1103 and you weren't there. We kicked down the door looking for Terry because you know why? She called 911. I said, and remember when you told me that Terry never showed up? I know that's a lie, David, because we found Terry's bloody clothing in your home. Now. This dude is so, like, he's the dumbest criminal ever. Like, blood on the floor, let the bloody clothes, uh, literally has her in a trash can. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what happened to her. There's nothing in my house. That's for sure. David's getting nervous, fidgeting in his seat. <clears throat> he started rubbing his pants. I looked because I didn't see this at first. He had dark stains. So as I'm calling him on his lies, and I said, in fact, you even have Terry's blood on your jeans. David's ax starts He's to He's wearing the Suddenly, same he jeans? Story. He, had he didn't even change his jeans, bro. What? Admits that Terry did show up at his house that morning. He had told me he is a good dad. He was putting the children's homework into their backpacks. So while his back was turned towards the front door, Terry was now in his home, unbeknownst to him. He said, I turned around and Terry was standing behind no me way. with a hammer raised over. Oh my God. Her head with her pants down around her ankles. But it's like. <laughs> what the fuck? What? Bro, I promise. I pro bro, hear me out. Hear me out, bro. She broke in. Pants down around her ankles. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know if she's peeing, pooping, or I don't know. She put her pants were down. What the hell are you talking about? Got a hammer, dude. She's gonna hit me. Yeah, I'm really glad this guy is really stupid. Really? With the pressure building, <sighs> David's lies are becoming more outlandish by the minute. He I don't know. I believe him. You know what? He has a point. You know, maybe we just haven't heard his side yet wife would sneak in and attack him out of nowhere and he had to do what was necessary to defend himself fearful for his life he indicated he reached next to a blue trash can grabbed a baseball bat which happened to be there and he swung it for dear life striking terry in the face whoa he, he grabbed duct tape but he doesn't know why he's gonna sit there and tell us that doesn't know why remember that it's all blur this is the mother of his kids <clears throat> he knows what dude he that class classic Classic criminal shit right there. That you know, this is what criminals do when they know they're caught. I blacked out. The demons were talking to me. I don't know. There's like some some demon and dark presence inside me that just takes control, and I just can't control it. And then the last one of all, God. At least he believes in God. Am I right? Because I swear to God, he's gonna mention that at one point or another. That he's a godly man and he would never do something like that because he believes in God. Did to her. The detectives don't believe a word of David's story of self-defense, but they have to keep him talking, hoping he'll slip up more. <clears throat> they question him for hours. I don't know why I tortured her for hours on end. I'm honest, sir. I had no clue. It was the demons. Anything that will help them in their search. He is a very dangerous individual and, in my view, a monster. Cold-blooded doesn't give a, a care about anyone but himself. Meanwhile, Terry's situation has gone from bad to worse. There's no heat, and she's still packed in with snow, trapped in the duct-taped garbage can. Her body temperature is dropping rapidly. My hands hurt really bad. My feet were literally freezing. I kept trying to get my hand down there to cup my feet, and I couldn't. 
Terry feels her eyelids start to drop. Oh, man. She desperately wants to rest, but she knows that would be a death sentence. My head was still bleeding. There were a couple times when I was just so drained. I thought, I need to rest a little bit. Oh, and right man. away, I thought, I know I can't. Because I know if I rest, that's going to be it. And I just remember doing anything and everything I could to keep myself awake. Dude, she is so out. strong. That's crazy, Terry man. has lost too much energy to escape from the garbage can. She's losing Not going to lie. I had to say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm out. I just feel like, yeah, I'm gone. Oh, okay. You got me. I'm dead. Sorry. That's what I do. Hope that anyone will be able to find her. She doesn't even know where David left her, but there's one thing that keeps her going. What about my kids? I'm here and I can't protect them, but that is the adrenaline that kept me going. That is what kept me alive. Terry is barely hanging on, but she finds the will to fight through the thoughts of her daughters. At the same time, police are racing to find them. They're pushing David for answers about his ex-wife and children. And finally, with the help of the detectives calling <clears throat> him out on his lies, he starts to crack. He tells them that he dropped the kids off with the babysitter. They finally have a Thank lead God. on the location of the girls. But with all of his lies already, they don't know what they'll find at the address he gives them. Following up on their only lead, please, please approach the house please. with caution. They find that, for once, David told the truth. Oh, thank God. We found the girl safe at that address, so we knew the kids would be okay. And it, um, just happy it worked out the way it did. It's a huge breakthrough. Not only are there- Dude, I'm so glad that at least the children didn't get traumatized. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure, like, they're probably- you know, they'll learn about this in the future. But the fact that, like, they didn't have to see their mom in that situation, the dad didn't, like, go crazy on them and try to kill them. He just, like, got him ready for school and then gave him to the babysitter and that's it. Thank God. The girl's both safe, but they <clears throat> might know something about what happened to their mom. But Amanda and Holly both say they didn't even see her that day. Oh, and thank even God. though David revealed where the kids were, he still has no interest in helping save their mom. Investigators confiscate his personal items, like his wallet and clothes. He has business cards in his wallet, and police start calling every phone number they can find. They're not having any luck, until they see one card that stops them in their tracks. One of the investigators saw a card for a storage unit in Wheeling, Illinois. And when we called them, we asked the guy working the oh. counter, hey, does David Larson have a storage unit here? Yes, he does. When was the last time he was there? Well, he was here yesterday. Oh, shit. Finally, police think they know where he took Terry. They race to the storage unit, knowing she's enduring frigid temperatures and serious untreated injuries, and there's not a second to waste. I remember that when we first walked in, it was really, really dark and really cold. We started to call out, ma'am, are you that there? That lady get canned for not taking? Yeah, we don't know. I don't know what happened to the 911 operator. It's the police. We're here to help you. At first, there's no response. They use a pry bar to get inside the storage unit. There's boxes and plastic containers on the floor. But then, they see a garbage can with the lid duct taped closed. I noticed a two-tone, like a black and like wood-colored baseball bat on the side. But I could see what appeared to be oh dried God, blood dude. on the bat. And I just remember getting chills. Meanwhile, Terry is drifting in and out of consciousness. She doesn't know how much longer she can hold on. But suddenly, she hears a sound. She's terrified, wondering if David is back to kill her. I remember hearing some noise, like somebody was coming back in. I panicked because I thought, oh my gosh, he's coming back. I don't know what he's going to do. Is he going to shoot me now because I'm still alive? Was he going to do dump the garbage can in the lake? I don't know. Terry tries to stay calm, not making a sound in the hopes that he'll still think she's dead and leave her alone. But then she hears a voice that doesn't belong to her captor. I heard somebody say, we're the paramedics. <clears throat> and I just felt such a sense of relief Jesus that Christ. I'm still alive and somebody's actually here. We went over to the garbage can, took everything off the top of it, took the tape off of it, opened the lid, and that's when we looked down inside. I, I couldn't believe what I saw. It hit me like nothing ever before in my career. And we saw this poor woman inside the garbage can in a fetal position. I remember seeing a very large gash on her head. Her eyes were oh, swollen God. shut. Her face was swollen, black and blue. Oh, God. It was horrific. Beaten tied up, and left for dead in the freezing trash can. Miraculously, Terry is still clinging to life. Just the fact that she's breathing and she's speaking and she's alive, I was just 
overwhelmed with happiness, but at the same time... <clears throat> David may have been a villain, but at least he wasn't a monster. Sure about that? 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 May not be out of the woods. When he relayed the information they had found her, it was... Um, the best news best one call that i've ever heard. i think what they're trying to say is at least he didn't kill the kids but again sure about that sure about that you see but there was concern because it was a very cold winter night and being over a day that we didn't know what condition she was in terry is rushed to the hospital david hit her dozens of times with a baseball bat oh my and she's God. been trapped in snow and ice for are you sure about that there it nearly is. 27 <clears throat> hours her body temperature dropped below 84 degrees Fahrenheit still fighting for her own life there's one thing she cares about much more the first thing I asked when I came to is where are my kids when Terry is told her kids are safe and W sound, mom and David Larson is in jail W she's mom hit with a wave of relief <clears throat> now she knows the fight was worth it to make sure her daughters were safe that's a W right Despite there the good news Terry is faced with a tragic loss because of what she suffered, she had a miscarriage, losing no! the baby that she was supposed to be celebrating with her family. It was, it was devastating. When my eyes were open and I, and I first saw Nick, it was just, I can't believe I'm here. And it was sadness of what we had to go through after just being married. Sadness Dude. after losing our baby together. That's so fucked up, man. Terry oh does my all God. she can to focus on the positives. She's still alive, and so are her two daughters. Because of frostbite, they have to amputate Terry's toes. No! Even that is almost a relief for her to hear. The doctors thought at the time that they might have to amputate my legs and my arms below my elbows. I remember my dad saying to the doctor, do you really have to take her toes? I remember saying, dad, what's most important is that I'm here and my kids Not are safe the toes, and my kids are here. Man. Not the toes, man. Not the toes. It was very... That's emotional. the best part. When they found her, the doctors estimated that she maybe had one hour <clears throat> before she would have died. Oh, my God. After a long recovery, Terry has to go to court to face David again, reliving the trauma of not only what she went through in the garbage can, but also of losing her unborn child. They question Terry on if she's had a miscarriage before, thinking it could have happened naturally, not because of what her ex-husband did. Of course they question that. had a plea. I was very upset about that because I was told there were a hundred pieces of physical evidence. There was so much <clears throat> overwhelming evidence. That of course, he's going to have a fucking plea, dude. They all have a plea. That there was no reason to do that. But because the child I was carrying died, they wanted to look back into any record I ever had in my lifetime. If I ever had a miscarriage and, you know, anything like that. I just felt I didn't feel very well served at the county level. Terry what? You weren't well served on the justice system? But how? Our justice system is so good and fair. He still has to keep fighting to make sure she brings her David. abuser to justice. At the federal level, David Larson is sentenced to life in David. prison, and Come Terry here. and her family Come are here. finally safe. At the sentencing, he was glaring at me. He's I messing with my cables. Get to me because again, <clears throat> it's you know what? I'm out here. I'm living my life, and you're going away. You can't hurt me anymore. Hell yeah. Even Mom W. Bars, he still tries to scare Terry. He demands visits fuck? with his daughters, and he even attempts to escape. But Terry doesn't let his antics get to her, Good. refusing to let him control her anymore. I am not a victim. I'm a survivor. He is his own victim because he tried taking my life away, and he just took his own life away from himself. Damn. Terry also works to protect She's other survivors of fire. domestic abuse. She tours colleges and gives talks <clears throat> to young students about red flags in an abusive partner, how to get out, and how to get help. Even though Terry Big left w. after he started abusing her, the laws didn't give her enough protection. So today, she's fighting to give more rights to victims. Terry became a public face of the campaign to pass Marcy's Law in Wisconsin, which Woo! gives crime victims more protection at the state and county level. Woo! And in 2020, the bill passed. She's oh! also enjoying life with her own family, and she even welcomed a baby boy with her husband, Nick. Oh! She's still very close with her daughters, who are both married Dude, this is the happiest and ending of a video I've so ever seen. protect her family and give them a better future. And because of that, they know there's a life worth living. Terry yes! is very determined, yeah! a survivor, hey, come on, fighting baby. Come on. Yes! and not come to on. I admire her for that. That's the perfect one for that. Death right in the face. 
When you go through something like that, it puts everything in a whole new perspective. <clears throat> I can still do most yeah, we got the good that, ending, that chat. We got the good ending. Kids. Let's go. No one to died. Kids, to talk we finally get a video where no one dies, dude. I believe that my love for my children was a huge part of what kept me going and kept me fighting. I needed to be there for them, and I made it. Fuck that guy, dude. Now it's time to walk away. I hope you enjoyed your stay. Did you laugh or cry or maybe subscribed? I'll thank you either way. You know I will miss you. I hope you return. Tell your friend or your mother to get me more views, please.